So today's uh, Coda Girl Hack Day is really, it's about two things. It's um, showcasing some amazing technologies and some great things that young girls can do with tech, whether it's building a website or, you know, we've got some great wearable technology going on over here or, you know, whether it's maker events. But it's also about there's some amazing female mentors that have come out, you know, to, to support us. It's very much grassroots and it's really kind of showing the young girls that there's a great vibrant female participation in tech and it really is something that they can work towards you know and it's a very supportive community you know. I'm just going to very quickly take you through a presentation a lot of it is video I really hope the sound is working um, because I don't want to bore you with uh, me I want to show you a few people who are a bit more inspiring than myself so uh, one of the reasons the guys work so hard on this because what you're probably not aware of uh, that uh, purple line is uh, men by the way and the red line is women. They're some of the biggest tech companies in the world. And you can see we do not have enough women in the technology and leadership roles in these companies. It's something that we're really trying to change. And many of you young girls who are here today and the sort of things you're going to learn today will allow you to possibly even reverse those lines, but at least maybe get them sort of fairly even. Um, just to, to take you through, I, I do think uh, women in technology have been written a lot out of history. You've probably heard of somebody called Ada Lovelace. She was the first computer programmer. You hear about Babbage Moore, who was the person she did the computer programming for, because he's a guy, obviously, and in history we like to talk about men. Uh, we're trying to change all of that, particularly pe people like Neve and Joanne and all the rest as well. Um, the code breakers during World War II, uh, did, have, did anybody see the film on Turing? Uh, well, this woman here, played by Keira Knightley, that's actually the real woman there. She's not quite as glamorous as Keira Knightley, but every bit as smart and smarter. One of the best uh, mathematicians in the country at the time, uh, worked, uh, her work with Turing was absolutely vital. Uh, this is Heidi Lamar. She would be, I suppose, if you like, the Jennifer Lawrence of her day. Um, who uses Wi-Fi here at home? Okay, well, you wouldn't be using it if it wasn't for her. Not only was she an actress, but she co-invented Wi-Fi. Uh, this is Grace Hopper. Um, have you heard of the computer bug? She coined the expression again, an incredible, and she was responsible really for the invention of COBOL, which is one of the most complex uh, programming languages. I'll leave people who are more expert than me to contradict me there. Um, I just want to show you very, very quickly a uh, little, this is about a two minute movie. Um, sorry, it's not a movie. It's actually a trailer for a movie. A uh, very good friend of mine, Kathy Kleiman, is actually the producer director of the movie. It's just two minutes, but it shows you a little bit of the role of women in really vital, vital technology in history. If you're in the computer field uh, from the very beginning, you're going to be the first in a lot of things. I've never since. Uh, never been in as exciting an environment. We knew we were pushing back frontiers. In February of 1946, six months after World War II had ended, America learned of a secret army project called ENIAC. It was the first all-electronic digital computer. Yet the tale of ENIAC's programming by a group of young women has been all but erased from computer history. During World War II, the U.S. had assembled a crew of nearly 100 mathematically trained women whose official title was computer. Women who were computing complex ballistic trajectory equations by hand and using mechanical desktop calculators. In the spring of 1945, six were selected to figure out how to program the ENIAC machine. Fran Bielis, Betty Jean Jennings, Ruth Lichterman, Kathleen McNulty, Betty Schneider, Marlon Weskoff. We were computing ballistic tables on a hand calculator. We were computing, and we were computers. There were logical diagrams of the ENIAC, and we were supposed to study them to figure out how to program it. The ENIAC was a son of a bitch to program. ENIAC became a legend. Eckhart and Mockley became famous. However, the ENIAC programmer story the story of these six women founders who created the first sort routine, first software application, and became the first teachers of modern programming was never told. Their work dramatically altered computing in the 1940s and 1950s as they paved the path to modern computer science. At that time, the emphasis was on the invention of the ENIAC, I mean, developing the mechanics, the hardware. We were like fighter pilots. I mean, here was this great, great machine, but you couldn't just take any ordinary 
pilot and stick him into a fighter pilot and say, go to it now, man. I mean, that was <laughs> not the way it was going to be. I had a fantastic life. Everything I did was the beginning of something new. I really loved working with those girls. Uh, Kathy Kleinman, when she went to research this, uh, she went and asked some of the guys who had um, studied this very closely, and she said, who were the women? And the guys told her that they, oh, they were models. Um, which gives you an idea, that was the assumption, they weren't models, obviously, they were remarkable programmers. One of them was Kay McNulty, she's actually Irish from Donegal, and the really lovely thing is Dublin City University recently renamed its computer building after her. So just to, to really remind you that there are those incredible women out there. Just in the current day, that's Jocelyn Bell Burnell, anybody who's into astronomy, she invented pulsars. Uh, that's uh, Megan Smith, she's the Chief Technology Officer for the whole of the United States of America, uh, formerly Google. Uh, anyone heard of Burning Man, the festival? Yeah? I mean, it's a, it's a very um, cool, I suppose, arts and music festival. And it's just to show you as well that studying computer science doesn't necessarily lead to um, what you might imagine as a career. Um, that's Heather, she is the Chief Technology Officer for Burning Man, an incredibly highly qualified computer scientist. It doesn't necessarily look like it, but um, looks can be deceiving, and it was one of the things I wanted to point out. I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about role models. The theme here is colour and magic, um, and I just wanted to show you some magic that happened earlier this year at InspireFest. So excited to be back here. Um, so, and um, thank you so much for inviting me again. Um, I am a documentary filmmaker, photographer, and social entrepreneur. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about the coolest project that I've ever done, which is a direct result of me being a speaker at InspireFest last year. Uh, as Anne mentioned, I showed my movie, The Illusionist, which is about the marketing of unattainable beauty ideals around the world. What's interesting is that when we were in the green room, just before we went on stage last year, we were handed gift bags for all the speakers. And when I opened mine, I found inside a Lottie doll, um, which is this little one. And I almost screamed, I was so excited, because um, with all of my work on The Illusionist, I knew that girls, they are targeted with a lot of really toxic messages. And uh, fast forward to a couple of days later, I went home to Paris, and uh, I took that selfie, and I tagged the Lottie company. But as a result of this picture, uh, the Lottie company noticed me, and uh, what happened was, a couple of months later, I got an email completely out of the blue from Ian Arkin from Arclue, which is the company that makes Lottie dolls. And uh, Ian told me, I have been looking for a filmmaker to make a film for us, and I think that because of your background, I think you'd be perfect for it. Everybody know who this is? No, it's Michelle Obama. She's um, the First Lady of the United States of America, but in her own right, she's a highly qualified lawyer. She uh, believes in something that I believe in very, very strongly, and that is, you know, when we're young, particularly young girls, you're under a huge amount of pressure about clothes and makeup and beautiful things, and why not? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But just don't forget, when you're doing things like that, to not worry too much about how you look and what people think of you the real magic in your life will come from making things and creating things. So whether that's coding, whether that's programming, whether that's you know, hacking hardware, always be making things and always be getting smarter. Do, she got A's in school and all the rest of it. She worked very hard and she has this lovely thing that she says. She says, if I'd worried about who liked me and who thought I was cute as a teen, I wouldn't be married to the president of the USA. So I think it's a really nice line. And do remember to always be learning, no matter what your age. And I know you're going to learn absolutely tons today. So listen, thanks again to, to the gang who made all this happen for you today. Um, Coder Dojo, UCD, TOG, Coding Grace, and I think Hello Beslo were very involved in this as well today. And they are a fantastic bunch as well that are well worth checking out. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that, guys. OK, very best of luck today.
Enjoy this video? Click here to get the latest news from siliconrepublic.com and find us on social media.